Hi, it's Shayna with Dancing Daisy Designs and I'm back with a new project today. Today I'm going to be working on this nightstand and I'm actually going to rebrand this nightstand and I'm going to call it a side table slash nightstand when I go to sell it. Just because it was a nightstand originally doesn't mean that's what it has to be now. Um, this could easily go next to a couch as a side table with extra storage or you could put it maybe under a window um, with a plant on it and some cute items and then you have extra storage as well. Or maybe next to the, close to the front door where you could put your keys and stuff on it with cute little arrangement. So just because it was a nightstand doesn't mean that's what it has to be now. And since I only have one, I think it's really important to make it seem like it could be used for multiple purposes. So my ideas for this are I want to make it old and as though it's been painted like 12 times. That's the look I want to go for with this. So I actually did a little teeny bit of sanding on it already in prep just because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it yet. So when I was prepping some other furniture, I went ahead and I, and I sanded a, little, a couple little spots on here. But now I don't really care about that because we want it to look old and very used. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be using DIY paint products today by Debbie's Design Diary. And these are really cool paints. I love them. They're like a clay based type paint. And so they have, a, it, it's a little different texture. It's similar to a chalk paint, but you get more, um, like if you brush it, you get more brush strokes, a little bit more texture. So it's really perfect for this kind of a of a uh, makeover. So today I've got Bohemian Blue, which is a nice uh, dark blue color. I've got a green, which is called Fancy Farm Girl. You can kind of see on the edge there a little bit of what color that is. And I've got a mustardy yellow. This one is called Queen Bee. So those are the three paint colors that I'm going to be using today. And I'm going to be using my, my Paint Pixie brush. Oh, it's a glare. And I'm going to be using a spatula to put on some of the paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first get started by just putting a base layer with the Bohemian Blue on. And then we'll come back and we'll get started with the fun stuff. This is what the Bohemian Blue looks like. It's a dark, kind of like a navy kind of blue. And see, this is the color. So I'm just gonna get a little bit on my brush and get started. See how nice it goes on? Smooth. dry I let it sit overnight just to make sure and um, we've got a nice beautiful coat of bohemian blue on this and I just love that color I think it looks great just like this but we're gonna add some fun accents to it to make it look old and fun like it's been around for decades so I've got my spatula for that and I have a metal one and a plastic one. Um, I'm kind of concerned that this one has really sharp edges. So I'm worried I'm going to scratch this. So just in case that seems to be an issue, I've got the plastic one to try out. So we're already there. I've got my paint. I just put a little bit out here on a paper plate. I've got Fancy Farm Girl here. And this one over here is Queen Bee. And so I don't think I'm going to need much, so I just put a little bit on a plate to go. And then I also pulled out a, another color. This one is called Farm Fresh. 
and as you can see here on the edge it's a like a robin's egg blue kind of color so I'm not sure we might need another color so I grabbed that just in case so let's get started so I've just got my spatula and I'm just going to dip it in don't want too much paint on there just a little bit on the on the edge and then we're just gonna decide where we want it on the piece lay it down and just scrape it across and I realize you guys are a little far out but I will zoom in in a little bit so you can get a better idea of this so I'm not gonna get any more paint on here I'm just gonna leave it and come over to another area and do the same thing do you see how that kind of went across okay so I just wanted to give you a little bit of a close-up here those are the first two swipes I took here so that was the first one this is the second one, and notice how it just kind of skipped across. It's so perfect. That's exactly what I would like it to do. So that's a close-up of what it's looking like when I'm doing the swipes with the spatula. Okay, I brought you in quite a bit closer. <laughs> Hello! So you could see better what I'm doing here. So I've still got paint on my spatula. Can you see that? And so that just that little teeny bit of paint, I'm still working with that. So I'm just gonna do a couple more swipes. And it doesn't seem to be scratching. As long as I keep it nice and flat, I'm not doing any scratching, so that's great. So what are you guys thinking of that effect? I think, I think it's working exactly how I wanted it to. Let's try a little bit of yellow now. I'm just gonna do the same thing, just dip like the tiniest little bit. See, can you see that? Just a tiny little bit on there and then we're just gonna go back in the same area. Just do the same thing. I think that this is one of those kind of techniques that looks a little rough at the beginning. You're looking at it going, oh my gosh, she's ruining that piece of furniture. It looks so nice with the blue, but I know it's gonna look amazing when I'm done. And the good thing about this, I could make as many smears across here as I want, and I can always go back in the areas that I'm not happy with and I can repaint it with the bohemian blue and I could have a fresh new start. So I'm not worried at all about it looking weird. So I think I'm gonna go this direction now. Pull the draw out a little bit. I actually saw this technique on, um, I was watching uh, Debbie's Design Diary on YouTube. She's actually the creator of this paint line, DIY Paint by Debbie's Design Diary. And she did a technique like this, and this is where I first saw it. And then I also saw Dion Woods of the Turquoise Iris on YouTube. She did another, a beautiful piece with the same technique. And so that's kind of, that's where I saw this and got this idea. This is my first time trying it. And I'm really excited. Hoping it's gonna look amazing just like theirs did. This is something that is going to take quite a bit of work going back and forth um, in order to get just the look I want. So that's okay. I'm excited. All right, let's go back in with some green. Oops. 
didn't even realize these are bright colors, but they've got kind of like a fall feel to them. So that's very appropriate to this time of year. Nice. Just gonna keep alternating back and forth with the different colors. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of water. I'm just gonna mist it. This is gonna help the paint colors to mix a little bit better. And see how it's pulling back some of the paint I already put down on there. That makes it look really old. Well used. Okay. I've also got a damp rag here. I think it's time to scrape this off. Let's just move this around with the water a little bit and see what happens. bit more water we're starting to get a little bit of, uh, of dripping and pulling down I think that looks kind of neat not a hundred percent sure if I like it as like a finished product but Sometimes you have to play a little bit and then step back and let it dry and do its thing and come back in and play a little bit more. Like I said, this is a project that's going to take some time and effort. Okay, I'm going to bring a little bit more yellow in because I noticed that when I wet it, it pulled a lot of green and it kind of hid out the yellow. So let's see, where else do we want yellow? Okay, thinking a little bit more water, let the colors run and play a little bit. I'm thinking that maybe we should let it dry, see what it looks like, and then go from there. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, it's all dry, and this is not the look I was going for. Um, it actually looks a little bit more muddy in person than it does on the camera. Um, that's not what I was wanting. So when I added the water, it seems like that's what brought that effect in. I do like that effect on some pieces, but that's not what I was going for here. So what I did is I went ahead and I put some Bohemian Blue on my plate. That's the color, the undercolor that this is painted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my spatula or putty knife. I remember the other name for this. <laughs> and I'm going to use that as I go. And I'm going to layer this in as well. And I think that's going to take some of the muddiness out. And um, I did leave this out while this was drying. So hopefully 
you know, it thickened up a little bit, which is okay because that's just gonna add to the texture. And for this look, that's what I want. So let's play some more. Yes, it did thicken up just a little bit. Um, so that's perfect. So let's just get some of that back in here. put some of that blue in here. It probably looks like a bit of a hot mess to you guys, <laughs> but this is kind of the way it goes when you're building this kind of look. So I'm not discouraged, so don't be discouraged on your end because this is going to, it's going to look fabulous when we're done. I mean, really, you don't, there, there's not a lot of talent involved with this. You just kind of, just kind of smear it on every here and there. And just keep building just keep building up texture in different spots and areas. And eventually you'll get that really old, lots of layers of paint has chipped off kind of feeling on this. And like I said, worst case scenario, you don't like it, you just paint right back over it and start over fresh and new. And with this putty knife, you can add it on as thick or as light as you want. So it really, it really just, it matters how hard you push when you pull your knife and how much paint you have on there. So this is really just a play, play and have fun and see what happens kind of project. So don't be afraid to try new things because the result just might be amazing. messy looking <laughs> bit of paint there. So that's a really nice under layer, I think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with a lot more of the Bohemian Blue and just my spatula knife. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover up areas of this in order to pull some of the background back out and take away some of the chaos. So that is the next step, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the rest of this look just about the same as this. That way when I go back over with the blue, I could do it all in one shot and get a very cohesive look. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and we'll do the, the blue to pull it back from the chaos together. 
Okay, now we're dry for the most part. So, at least the front is dry. So we're gonna see what we could do now to pull this back from its incredible chaos into something that looks like what we envisioned to begin with. So I'm gonna use, like I said, the Bohemian Blue, which is the base color that we used here, this dark blue color. And I'm going to use that to kind of pull this back quite a bit and make it look nice again. So, got my spatula still on hand and I've got another great tool, my fingers. I think I'm going to start using my fingers. So, let's see what we could do here. So I'm just going to like just go in and bring quite a bit of the blue back in with my fingers. Looks like I'm gonna need some more. Get herself some more blue. Okay. And I hope you feel like you're in close enough where you can see what I'm doing now. This is pretty much as close as I can get where you can still see me and the whole piece. So let's get some more paint on our plate. Okay. I'm just using a spoon to scoop it out. So I'm just gonna get the paint off the spoon onto my fingers. I'm just kind of swiping it with three fingers. I know the blue is kind of darker than the base right now, so it looks like really dark, but it's going to dry back into that background blue that we've got. So by doing this, I can pull all of this back into the background underneath the blue, and then when I go to distress it, I'll wet distress it, and in areas where I do want more of the color to come back through, I'll just lightly distress it so we could see those colors back through there. So, oops, sorry, the air conditioner came on. I hope that's not loud. Makes me feel like a kid again, <laughs> finger painting on the on the furniture.
on it and looked at it again in the morning and this is just way too busy still. Um, it's kind of the look I was going for, but there's way too much chaos going on still. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in with my paint and my brush. And I'm gonna cover up most of this with the blue again. And then whenever I go back in to distress it, I can always pull a little bit of the green and yellow back through. So that's the new plan. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now. I went back and I covered it with a lot of blue again, covered up most of that undercoat that I did with the green and the yellow. And I just left a little teeny bit peeking through here and there. And so now what I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna distress it with a wet towel. And I'm going to hopefully just bring just a teeny bit of that yellow and green back through just little touches here and there to give it that, you know, painted several times kind of old vibe. So that's what I'm going for. So I've got my fingers crossed that this is going to work out well and I'm not going to have to go back and paint it again. So here we go. Okay, I can... I can tell that it's going to be really hard for you to see what I'm doing with the distressing because when I wet it, it just turns really dark blue again because it reactivated the paint. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back, I'm going to very, very lightly take some of the blue off to expose the, the yellow and the green that we want. And then um, once it dries where you can see what I've done, I will come back on and give you a peek before I seal it. All right, it's all distressed up. And you can see in the areas where that I where I pulled back um, with the with the wet rag, um, it does have like kind of a chalky look to it. That is going to disappear when I seal it. Um, that's all going to be gone, and it's going to be this nice deep blue, or it's going to be a little lighter where I pulled back and got the green and the yellow back through. Um, I did go all the way down to the wood in some spots just to give it an authentic, you know, aged look. So we've got that the aged, it's been around for a while, it's been painted a few times, it got a little banged up here and there, and it, we, and it pulled back into some of the paint colors that were on it before. So that's, I think I achieved that, and um, this was not an easy technique to do. Uh, I really, would say if I had to go back I wouldn't have gone so crazy with the undercoat I put a lot more paint on this piece than I think was necessary um, but like I said in the beginning if you if you don't like it or you mess up you can just paint over it and start over and so for the most part I covered most of it up and we got the result that we wanted um, I'm gonna go ahead and seal this and then I'm gonna take some nice close-up pictures so you can see, you know, the where I pulled back through and you could see exactly what I'm talking about whenever I say that, that chippy aged paint peeling back kind of look. for watching. I really had fun making this piece. It was really neat to try out a new technique and I really learned a lot. Um, I had I had to try a few different things in order to get the look I was going for and it was really it was really neat. I had I had fun. And so and I hope that you guys aren't afraid to try new things because um, sometimes you you know you learn a lot and you know the the outcome was really great I am really happy like I said with this piece so don't be afraid
And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notifications button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks, and I'll see you next time. Bye.